Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk about color calibration. Specifically I'm going to talk about color calibrating your videos in Final Cut Pro. So no matter what kind of camera you shoot your videos on, whether it's a professional camera or maybe a GoPro, maybe your iPhone, maybe even a drone, you're going to need to do some sort of color calibration if you want the color in the video to be accurate and true to life. So how do you do this? Well, the easiest way is with one of these. This is an X-Rite Color Checker Passport. They call it the passport because, well, it's about the size of a passport. It fits in your back pocket. But when you open it up, it has all sorts of goodies. So one of the goodies is this nice big white balance sheet right here. You also have a focusing target there. You turn the page and then, well, we got some more gray chips down here, but we have on top the important part. This is your color calibration chart. It contains a whole bunch of color chips and I'm going to talk more about these in a little bit. But suffice to say that all you need to do to set up the calibration for your scene is simply hold this up to whatever subject you're about to shoot. As long as the color checker is illuminated by the same light as whatever's illuminating your subject, then this thing will work perfectly for doing color calibration. Now you can buy these online, they're about $100, uh, and they are an indispensable tool for all of the video that I shoot. So Final Cut Pro, let's take a look at how we actually use the footage from one of these to calibrate the color in a scene. So this is some random video footage from a Final Cut Pro project that I created earlier this year. Uh, this was for a, a tutorial on how to make smoked salmon. And in this footage, you can see that well, it looks terrible. This is straight off of the camera. Um, it looks really, really muddy. Uh, skin tones are blah. The background is blah. The salmon is blah. Uh, even the blue on the box of salt here just doesn't look correct, and my shirt doesn't. Nothing in here is right. The colors are just plain wrong. But luckily, when I shot this, I also took some footage of my color checker video. So I have this as reference. And I'm going to start with this by dragging this clip into my timeline. And then I'm going to set uh, my playback head at a nice uh, spot right here. Now, the first thing we want to do is set a proper white balance. That'll just get us in the right ballpark. So I'm going to go over here, balance color, select white balance, and then I'm going to use this gray swatch as my white balance. Okay. Now the colors are still wrong but this at least gets us uh, more correct than where we were. But now what we need to do is we need to get the hue and saturation correct. Now, what you see over here are six color swatches on the top of the color checker. These six color swatches match up with these six boxes on our vector scope. Now, the difference, though, is that these swatches represent 50% saturation whereas these boxes represent 100% saturation. So the idea is, you see the spider legs down here. We need to get these aimed perfectly at their respective colors, and we need the distance so that the aim represents the hue and the length of each leg represents the saturation. We need them to aim at the color, but we need the length to be at 50%. So the red well, you can see the red is shooting up a little bit over here. We need to adjust the red over to here. And then we need the red to be about here on the saturation, 50% on each of these. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to make life easier is we're just going to crop out everything except for the color swatches. Okay, this way we don't get any extra noise in here. Now, we need to aim these. Let's do the hue first. So to set the hue of each six each of these six colors we need to aim them at these boxes the way we do that up here we can scale up the vector scope that helps a little bit but it's not really good enough so then we'll go to color corrections and just crank the saturation up we're just going to crank it just so we can see what we're doing this is a temporary saturation thing we don't care what the saturation is right now we only care about the hue now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to create a hue saturation curve modification and what I need to do is I need to select each of these six swatches. Start with the yellow, uh, go to the red, 
And what I need to do is I need to delete these extra control points. I only want control points for the colors that I'm actually working with. Select the blue, same thing. We'll delete the extras, cyan, and then finally green. Okay, so now we have uh, six control points for each of these uh, colors. And in order to adjust things, all we have to do is select it and move it. So let's start with the yellow. So now you can see on the vector scope, the yellow is perfectly lined up with the yellow box. Same with green. Let's drag the green around. The green's lined up. Cyan. Cyan was pretty close to begin with, but needs a little bit of tweaking. I'll get it a little hard to tell. Maybe about right there. Uh, the blue, need to bring it over here. Magenta is pretty spot on, so we'll leave that alone. The red is way off, so we'll bring the red over here. Okay, now on the vector scope, we have this line. This line represents human skin tones. All human skin tones should fall on this line. Well, down here, we have six swatches on the color checker, which represent human skin tones. And you can see that they are all a little bit off. They're all just a little bit too yellow. So I'm going to add one more control point. I'm just going to select this skin tone here, delete the extra control point, and I'm just going to move this around. There we go. Now, whoops, now our skin tones are all on the skin tone line. So the hue is perfect. We've done a great job of correcting the hue. Now we need to correct the saturation. So first thing, turn off the scaling. We're going to go back to our color wheel. And we're going to just pull this down to where things are roughly 50%. You know, more or less about right there. Then we will go back to our hue saturation curves. And under hue, hue versus saturation, we need to do the same thing again. We need our yellow. We need the red. We need the magenta, blue, cyan, and green. Whoops. Well, with the green, we need to... Uh, Delete some control points so we can add it. Okay, then we're going to delete all of the uh, extra control points that we don't need. Okay. So now for each one of these, we want to get this to roughly 50%. And unfortunately, in Final Cut Pro, you have to eyeball it. In Adobe Premiere, they actually have a marker line going around the ring indicating where 50% is. But in Final Cut Pro, for some reason, they don't have this, so you have to eyeball it. So let's start with the yellow. Now, the yellow looks pretty good to me already. I'd say that's about the 50% mark right there. Uh, the green, mm, yeah, the green looks like it needs just a little bit more. The cyan's way off. The cyan needs to come up to about here. Uh, the blue, eh, blue just needs a touch more. Magenta needs a bit more. I'll say about right there. Uh, the red, red's about right. I think I'll leave the red alone. So what we've done is we've pretty much now got the hues correct and the saturation correct. And if we go back over here, let's turn off our crop. You can already tell this looks a whole lot better just from this shot alone. The color swatches are correct. Uh, these are pure colors now at 50% saturation. The background now looks warmer. My shirt looks uh, more correct color of green or shade of green. My skin tones are correct. Everything looks a whole lot better. So one more thing that we can do is we, if we switch back over to the waveform, we can also adjust our white and black points. Now, we're going to end up tweaking these later once we actually use this in an actual shot. But what I like to do is just kind of get it started. So you can see that you know, the blacks really aren't black enough, so we'll bring the shadows down a little bit. Um, the whites aren't really where they need to be. We'll just bring those up a little bit for now. And we could probably bring the midtones just a hair down. Now, like I say, this is just a starting reference point. Um, we're going to end up having to tweak these once we apply this correction to an actual clip. But we have our calibration at this point. So what we do is we'll just take a random clip. Let's just take this clip and drag it into the timeline. So here's the uncorrected, muddy, horrible footage. Let's go over to our corrected clip, 
And all we have to do is we go to the Edit menu and we just say Copy. And then we're going to go and select our murky clip and we're going to go back to Edit and we will say Paste Effects. Boom! Suddenly everything looks a million times better. You can now see the salmon looks salmon colored. Uh, my skin looks correct. Uh, the wood colors look correct. The background is nice and warm. Even the blue on the salt box looks correct. Everything looks so much better. Here's the before. Everything's kind of green and muddy. And then here's after. It looks fantastic. So from here, this is where we can go in further and modify uh, our... Uh, our shadows and our highlights and our midtones, if we want. But honestly, I'm I'm pretty happy with the way this landed. Um, so I think I'll just leave those alone the way they are. Now we went through a lot of work to get this, to get the calibration where it is. But don't worry, you don't have to do this for every single clip, because we've now created this calibrated uh, reference right down here for every shot that we do with the same lighting. So let's go down here um, and we'll take this clip add it to the timeline. Okay, once again, murky, murky video, but all we have to do, edit, paste effects. Boom. One million times better. I mean, there's really no comparison between the before and after on this. Uh, it's the difference between really low quality looking footage that an amateur might use and a professional footage that is, you know, properly color calibrated before and then there's the after. Now it is a lot of work to do this initially. You will get faster at it the more you do it. And like I say, you can copy and paste once you've set it up for one, uh, one scene or one lighting environment at least. Now there is a way to do this automatically where you don't have to go through all this trouble. It doesn't really work, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it automatically anyway. And this is how it's done. So should you choose to try to automate this process, you're going to need a third-party plugin called Color Finale. Now this is version 2.0, which just came out, but I've used the original version of Color Finale and this version, and in either case, I have never gotten it to properly calibrate uh, the X-Ray Color Checker video. I get terrible results. Nevertheless, you can go onto the website, you can download Color Finale for free and try the demo mode. Um, and please, if you have gotten better results or you know of a way to make this work, please let me know in the comments. But I'm going to show you how you're supposed to do this and I'm going to show you the results that I get. To be fair to this, I'm going to go ahead and pre-white balance everything. Uh, it ends up it doesn't really matter if I white balance it or not. I've tried it both ways and in both cases I get horrible results. But I'm going to give it the best fighting chance I can. So I've pre-white balanced it here. Now I'm going to drag Color Finale over. When I do this, this nice Color Finale uh, Options dialog appears. And down towards the bottom, you'll see Color Chart. Click Show. And then it says Edit Chart. And you want to select Color Checker Passport Video. Now it's asking for me to basically select these swatches. So I just click on the corners here and then it will bring up this nice alignment tool. And I just want to align their little sampling icons with the swatches. And in theory, all I have to do is click Match Chart. Now right away you can tell that this did not work because you may remember how this clip looked when we manually calibrated it. Um, right here alone, you can already tell the color's wrong and the saturation is wrong. It's, it just doesn't look correct at all. Um, if you want proof, you go to the vector scope, um, go ahead and crank the saturation up so that we can see where things are, and you can see that the hue is wrong on everything. It did not get the hue right on one single swatch. Uh, if we go ahead and we reset the scale back down, you can see that it did not get the saturation right either. Uh, these are nowhere near 50% saturation, so the hue is wrong, the saturation is wrong. It simply did not work. Nevertheless, if we take our clip, drag it over, um, and we'll do the same copy-paste. So here's, here's the, uh, the clip as it came out of the camera. And then I'm going to do Paste Effects. Well, you can see that really all it did is it just kind of washed it out. Um, 
it did not properly calibrate this whatsoever. Here's the original out of the camera. Here's after color finale supposedly calibrated against our color chart. It just doesn't look right. Um, here's the footage that we did by hand. You can see how much better it looks. Um, saturation looks good. The colors look good. It's just a, a nice, healthy looking piece of video, whereas the color finale processed video looks absolutely horrible. So these, these are the results that I get uh, every single time. I've never gotten it to do anything different. Um, so for now, I recommend that you do the calibration by hand. Uh, feel free to play with the color finale demo. Uh, and like I say, let me know if you have any better results, but uh, these are the results I get. So do it by hand and you will get perfect color every single time. So that's pretty much all there is to color calibrating in Final Cut Pro using the X-Rite Color Checker Passport. I hope this video was useful. If you have any comments, as always, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.